Good evening. Tonight, I want to do something a little bit different. I want to read you and your loved ones, Twas the Night Before Christmas, a family tradition. Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with, with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas would soon be there. The children were nestled, all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief, and I in my cap, had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When out in the lawn, there arose such a clatter. I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window, I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to the objects below. Nah, someone else could probably tell better. Let's go on to some Ford stories. I got a present here. Two Ford Tech Make You Loco from Ford Claws. Let's see what's inside of here. Ah, memories from Ford repairs of the past. Let's take a look, shall we? All right, let's see what kind of memories old Ford Claws has packaged for us this year. Let's see what we got here. Well, this big one looks interesting. Check that one out first, what do you think? Ah, this one, I remember this one. This is a crankshaft pulley uh, on a 24 valve dock engine in a Ford Taurus. Let's say a 04, 05, somewhere in that era. And you're supposed to be able to just put a 16 mil on the end here, zip her off. Well, actually I think this is, is a, a, a left hand turn, so you go to the right to take it off. Guess what, round it off. Great, now what? Well, it's got a big old hex over here also. Let's use that. I used that and a pipe wrench, and I had a big old pipe wrench on here. Breaker bar, everything. Would not loosen, heating it, everything else. Broke the pipe wrench right in half. Look what we had to do to get this thing off of here. We literally took the cutting torch out and cut it right off of there, and this, is what was left in the um, crankshaft dampener. Here's the threads. Here's where we cut it off at. Unfreaking believable. Luckily, the heat broke the bond from cutting all that time. We cut for a while. I mean, we had, we had hoses and everything ready, and there was just sparks everywhere. Look at that. And then I was able to tap this out and get it out. What a nightmare job that was. Luckily, nothing got damaged in the end. What we got here? Nice small one here. Uh, this is a pressure control solenoid for a torque shift transmission. This one I had, it'd be very intermittent. That's how they are. Um, you have no line pressure when you first put it in the drive or reverse beginning of the day. And it's this darn PCA. Uh, line pressure control solenoid that sticks on these no matter what your fluid looks like uh, they just stick randomly on there and they're very hard to catch the way I had to catch it is I put a manual gauge on the transmission I watch the pressure okay I'm not getting no pressure of course I'm not gonna move and they go it go like that up the, the gauge just twitch in and then it'll finally get up there and that was the solenoid uh, coming to life basically it's very hard to catch especially if you don't know how to look for this at first. But through testing, I was able to diagnose it and replace it. 
It's quite common on torque shifts. What else we got here? Let's go for something that different shape, huh? Ah. This is a, um, a torque converter uh, fluid pump. It goes from the torque converter over here through the fluid pump over to the actual fluid pump over here that where the um, gears are inside there on AX4N or 4F50N uh, transmission AX4S. Um, and what happens on these is the pumps usually okay over here. The shafts are usually okay over here where it sticks in to the torque converter. They have problems with the torque converter stripping out where it sticks into it and therefore this pump never spins therefore this end never spins and your pump never turns therefore no line pressure the vehicle never moves these can be kind of hard to uh, diagnose also if you initially stick it down in the torque converter and it's gripping you gotta move it a little bit more and you'll feel it like chattering inside of it. they put a light down inside of the torque converter you'll never see it but the, the torque converters strip out on internally uh, where this sticks into it it's kind of hard to uh, diagnose at first also nothing very obvious what else what else this oh this one this one's a good tip for you guys um, I'll probably do a video on this one day I guess and give you a little bit more information but basically this is from a 7.3 liter and is a IPR it has a little nut in the end and all that stuff and here's the actual solenoid on it right internally right here is just a valve <laughs> this one actually stranded me. Customer said, oh yeah, it's, it just dies out, dies out. Well, I was driving around forever and the thing never died out. Well, I took a long trip to try to really duplicate the, the problem for the customer. And guess what? It died out. I was stuck on the side of the road. And I had heard about it, or had jogged my memory or something, that these solenoids on these 7.3 liter diesels they'll get hot and they'll open and internally the, the windings inside of there therefore they're not holding the valve in the proper position and you lose all your ICP pressure of course you're gonna die out so I ended up getting sick of waiting for the guys to come get me in the truck so what I do took my bottle of water and I poured it all over the top of that the solenoid itself down the valley there started it up and I was able to get back to the shop. That was a real, real adventure. And uh, I haven't seen one yet uh, since then, but yeah, that's another tip on these 7.3 diesels. That can happen. What else, what else? What is this thing? Okay, so I recently demoed this in a, a recent video, how to oil the, the cam sensor, and, uh, the synchro here and all that stuff. And some people were asking, what in the world happened here? Well, what happened is um, basically I got the wrong part from parts back in my early days as a Ford tech. Um, I'm, not I'm not ashamed to admit it. Back in the day, I was not perfect. And you don't get this way by uh, not making a few mistakes. So I got the, uh, the cam synchro and the sensor. Going to go change it out like normal on a Ranger. Put it down in there, everything's perfect. No no check engine light, nothing. I'm listening to it, letting it idle next to me in the next stall, I never walked away. And I'm listening and it's got a slight rattle to it. It's idling just fine, never revved it, nothing. I, look, I go over and the oil pressure light's on. The freaking, there was a difference that year on that Ranger and this was not sticking down in there far enough. So it only caught the top part of the cam as it's going around, right? And it just chunked away at it. Luckily, I was able to, uh, it was a four by two, so it was easy to drop the pan, drop the pan out of there, cleaned all the stuff up. This cavity right here goes right down into the pan area, so you're able to make sure you got all the debris. And uh, that, was, that was kind of scary though at first. Uh, it's, it's got a slight knock to it, no oil pressure, like what the heck? And it was just, they gave me the wrong parts. It was just slightly longer, it was weird. Never had that problem since though, have I? What else? What else? 
Here is a VCT solenoid from a 5.4 liter 3 valve, which I have a video out coming out on, um, on these and their problems. But basically, uh, this one threw me for a loop because, again, these things stick intermittently and can cause timing codes. So it's sticking, and I was driving, I was fine, and then I go to, I go to a stoplight, and things are dying out and all this craziness. And it was uh, the solenoids. Look, you can see the varnish on here. They get, you know, they get stuck. And uh, this is basically from lack of maintenance. It's not really on Ford's part, but yeah, that was a weird situation, also, for sure. Okay, what else we got here? This was an oddball. This is the inside of an AC compressor. This is a scroll type AC compressor and it basically has two of them inside of here and through them being different shapes like that you see the swirl they can go around you see parts missing and you know compress the refrigerant well guess what this one came apart internally and locked the heck up that was pretty freaky first starting the vehicle up and the belt is just locked on there and screeching and smoking and everything else I've never seen a compressor with this uh, AC compressor with this, you know, horrible failure and catastrophic failure like that since then. What is this one? Super small. Oh, this one. This one right here. This is from, a, I believe, a 5.0 liter 1998 Explorer. Right? Very rusty. Well... These have broken spark plug sh uh, shell tip problems also, apparently, once they got rusted enough. Look at this thing. It's perfectly fine as far as the threads, but right here with that rust and dirt built up, ate away at it, go turn the spark plug off of there, and that was left in the head. I did not want to pull the head. I did not want to deal with the exhaust on that vehicle. So rusted and old. What I did is I put one of those easy outs in there. Luckily, it was the exact size of that. Tapped it in there, and no heat or nothing. Maybe I sprayed some rust patch around there, and lo and behold, this thing came out. What are the chances? I was very excited to see it that this came out. Uh, that made my day. And then some. What's this one? Ah, some of you may recognize this. This uh, was a real common occurrence. This is a uh, nut that goes inside the body on uh, the four toruses and then the subframe bolt comes up and through it into the inside of the, the, the body in their little cavity. Well, what happens is they get rusted in there and then great, it got rusted. Well, uh, what also happens is these things, they start spinning inside of the caged uh, nut area on the side of there too. So you end up drilling a freaking hole in the floor and they even had a TSB out back in the day if some of you old, older guys remember this. Uh, with a hole saw bit, the right size, and a special plug to put back in the body and everything. That's how common they were, but this is my first uh, experience with that. Unbelievable. Luckily, it was in the boss's car. Oh boy, this one's heavy. What in the world? Oh boy. How many of you know what this is? What it is, is a uh, torsion bar, part of a torsion bar. Uh, Ford went to using torsion bars instead of springs up front in their F-150s for a long while, Expeditions too, and they figured it, it's, it's great. It puts all the, the spring part of the suspension in the frame basically, and it makes it less crowded up front by the rest of the vehicle. They're up, to, up there in the front suspension. Well, guess what? They get stuck in the lower control arm so bad that you have to torch them out of there because they will not come out with hammers or anything. So I got the torch out. Well, this bar is just gonna suck up all the heat and just keep taking it. So I was changing the bar out anyways. I lopped her off and then I heated this whole thing cherry red and I was able to finally get it out. That was about a four hour job of me fighting this out of here. Of course, it was my early days. I don't like using fire, even nowadays, the torch, uh, but I used it and a lot of persistence and patience. Hey, I got the proof right here, I got it out. Okay, okay. What else, what else, what else? This, <laughs> this right here is a piston Connecting rod 
Well, you can barely even see it. Things not even. Jeez. Um, this is a piston connecting rod from a 2.0 liter SPI in a Ford Focus I used to own. Yes, my engine did grenade, but it weighed to about 150,000 miles to do so. And I was making a left hand turn. Luckily, I got through the intersection. Da -da 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 -da. All those crazy noises and everything. And <laughs> sure enough, I knew what it was. And I got coasted into a parking lot and called the tow truck. And sure enough, I tore it down. And I actually rebuilt that engine because these things fail so friggin' often. The engines used, junkyard engines, were like $1,500. Yeah, where you can get, whereas you can get a Z-Tech engine that was the most popular engine back then, uh, for like $150, 200 dollars, two fifty from a junkyard or car, our cost at the dealer. So I ended up rebuilding the whole thing, and guess what? Thing's still running. I sold it, but it's still running. Okay, for those of you that have stayed behind and uh, uh, have waited for the best for the last here, uh, this is definitely the best story of them all. And uh, those of you that have stayed with me through this 16 minutes of yakking about stories, this is a good one. This is, I believe, by, based on the size of it, an upper ball joint. Um, where's the base of it? Well, the base of it's still in the knuckle. Uh, you know, it's still in there. This, how'd I get this out of there? Did I yank it out? Did it fall out? No. I blew it out of there. I blew it out of there like a freaking shotgun went off. And um, basically what was happening is I was working on F450 and the ball joints would not come out. The actual whole ball joint that presses into the knuckle um, would not come out. Beating on it, using the C-frame press, nothing. It was a salt plow truck, go figure. But it was an 04 F450 and it was new back in the day. Well. Uh, what I did is I started using heat. Any other time you use heat, right? Uh, to separate components, right? Well, I used a little too much heat, a little too long. And uh, this thing was like this. You know, it was like this. And it shot out of there, hit the concrete, ricocheted off, went right past me. There was the other Ford guy right here putting away the IDS. It went right past us. Gone. Sound like the oxyacetylene tanks blew up behind me. There's a shock wave. I couldn't hear anything anymore. Um, I was all jarred and messed up from the shock wave, I guess you could say, from the explosion. It was just unbelievable. It was as louder than anything I've ever heard in my whole life. And for those of you that uh, do or do not know, I used to be in the Marine Corps. I was there for the Baghdad invasion, and we had artillery going off in the field next to us, multiple guns with 20-mile shells, uh, gunpowder packs on them, which I guess is six packs in there uh, going off, and this is still was louder. Uh, gets better. We had a brand-new GT500 in the shop getting checked in. That was back when they brought them back, right? Uh, you know, back in the day. Brand new, sitting there in the shop. Thing goes, swing, off the ground, and it's gone. And what did it hit? What did it hit out of the whole freaking shop of things to hit? Hit the GT500. And I'm just gonna leave it at that. Merry Christmas, everybody, and happy holidays.